If you're taking physics, then the term freefall is eventually going to drop. What exactly is freefall, and how is freefall motion described? Well, I'm Mr. H, and I have some answers for you. Objects in freefall are moving through the air under the sole influence of gravity. Other forces are either non-existent or so small they're considered insignificant. Gravity is the sole influencer. I'll be discussing two types of freefall motion. The motion of an object released from rest from an elevated position and the motion of an object thrown upward from the ground. Gravity causes objects to accelerate, to speed up and to slow down. Since the force of gravity is downwards, the acceleration it causes is also downwards. At or near the Earth's surface, the value for the acceleration is a constant value of 9.8 meters per second per second, which we approximate as 10 meters per second per second. As an object rises and falls, it slows down and speeds up, but its acceleration remains a constant, unchanging value. This means that for each second of motion, a free-falling object changes its speed by the same change amount, by approximately 10 meters per second. As depicted by the dot diagram, as an object rises, it gets slower, its speed decreases. This is consistent with a downwards acceleration. And as the object falls, it gets faster, its speed increases, again, a downward acceleration. Velocity is a vector, it is a speed with a direction. We can represent these ideas on a velocity vector diagram. Each arrow represents a velocity. The length of the arrow represents the speed, and the direction represents the direction of the velocity. When we express these ideas by numbers, we use a negative to indicate downwards. Don't think of negative as less than zero. Think of negative as a direction, downwards. This table shows how the velocity changes over the course of time. For every one second of time change, the velocity changes by negative 10 meters per second. This table is for an object dropped from rest. What happens if the object's thrown upwards from the ground? An upward thrown object decreases its velocity value by 10 meters per second each second. As it falls, velocity values increase by 10 meters per second each second. The direction of the velocity is in the direction of the motion, always for free fall or any type of motion. So as the object rises, it's directed upwards, and as it falls, it's directed downwards. An important position on this trajectory is the highest position, where the velocity is momentarily zero meters per second. If thrown upwards at 60 meters per second, it would take six seconds to reach this highest point another six seconds to fall back to the ground, and a total time in the air of 12 seconds. It's worth noting that values of t and v are predictable. Knowing the velocity at any time allows you to predict the velocity at every time. Suppose you know that at three seconds the velocity is 30 meters per second. One second later, it's 10 meters per second slower. Another second after that, 10 meters per second slower still. One second prior to three seconds, it would be 10 meters per second faster. Knowing the acceleration to be 10 meters per second per second, you can determine the entire history of T and V. Finally, it's worth noting that there are two times at which the object has a speed of 20 meters per second. One time when the object's rising, two seconds before its highest point, and the other time when it's falling, two seconds after its highest point. Wherever the object has the same height, it has the same speed, at one point when it's rising, and the other point when it's falling. In the description section of this video, you will find some links to some pretty awesome interactive exercises on our website. The best way to ensure that you got this is to put to practice these principles you've been learning. So give one of them a try. Hey, I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.